just a quick question uh, after your introduction do okay yeah okay fair So, hi everyone, I'm Raul Saf, and today I'm going to be explaining the solution for one of the problems from the last code chef, like the October challenge. And I was actually also testing the round, so yeah, maybe I can give some insights about like how we test it and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to be explaining now the rooted minimum spanning tree problem, which was, in my opinion, one of the most interesting problems in this round, and I think it was in the end, like the third hardest one. So yeah, like maybe I'm just gonna start with the solution, uh, with the problem statement. And it's actually pretty simple. Basically we have a graph, which is like just a general graph. However, there is like one constraint, which is that uh, basically, I mean, you you will basically see it in the in the constraints is that there is, all, there is an edge from one to every other vertex. Like it's, I mean, in some sense it's just a graph such that the first vertex is connected to everything else. But apart from that, it's just a normal weighted graph. And like the problem asks you to find the minimal spanning tree. However, there is like a restriction. You're basically forced to have a fixed degree in for the first vertex. Or in other words, for every K from one to N minus one, we want to find the minimal spanning tree such that the degree of the first vertex is fixed to one of the k values. And we have to do this quite fast because like the constraints are up to 100,000. So yeah, uh, just to like, that, that's like just a brief overview of the problem statement, but I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard of the problem statement or like read it because uh, yeah, that's one of the harder problems. So. I kind of expect that already. And I'm the, I won't go into much detail in, for that. Also, I, I hear it's good to mention. Uh, actually, Kochev has this subscription at an academy, which is pretty cool. And yeah, you can check it out. Basically, what it provides is like live lectures on different subjects. And the cool thing is that basically there's like some teaching assistants who like in a way help you during the session. So it's like there are some doubts, basically like some other sessions where you can clear some doubts. So if you're like a beginner or you just want to learn something specific, I think it's a pretty good, cool thing. Like maybe one of the main things I would, uh, I mean, I guess like one of the main things is that you basically have like those, this teaching consistence, the subjects are pretty specific and it's very good. And also the most important thing is that actually the teachers are like very smart. They either went to IY or ACM or they're working in some very big companies. And yeah, like you can basically go through the page and see the course. So yeah, so then there's like the coach F code, which gives you, so yeah, if you want to sign up, there's like the coach F code, which gives you a discount, which makes the one month, the one month subscription to a flat 999, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I definitely suggest you check it. Like if you want to see the future courses, you can go to like, yeah, great. You can go to like this page and you can see like the recent courses and like the, here you can see like the ones that people enjoy the most. But yeah, I mean, I suggest you check it out. That's the guys for, Doing them are like, for example, past IY participants with medals or like ACM participants. So yeah, if you're a beginner, it's pretty useful. So yeah, let, let's go back to the problem now. And I guess let's go to the solution. So I'm gonna be using one note and let's start. Also again, I want to mention that uh, if you have some questions, just leave them in the chat and I'm gonna be answering them throughout the, throughout the sessions, throughout the session. And yeah, uh, also there is like a feedback form. Please fill it out after the session because it's very helpful. I mean, it's all, you can always do better. So yeah, I would really appreciate if you fill it out. So okay, going back to the problem statement. Basically what we have is we have a graph 
where the first vertex has is connected to everything else, like directly connected. And we want to compute f of x, where we will define f of x as the weight of the minimal spanning tree, such that de the degree of one is x. So yeah, I mean, basically like the problem statement is relatively simple, but the solution isn't that simple, unfortunately. And actually, so initially the problem, like the setter solution is actually pretty hard. It's like basically dynamic programming with divide and conquer plus HLD. Maybe like after, if we have time, I will just share a bit of the details. I'll just say on a very high level, the idea is that you just exclude the first vertex and you build the MST on the other vertices. So in some sense, like you build the MST on the vertices from two to N. And after that you do, there's like a quadratic dynamic programming, which is you basically do dynamic programming on tree on the MST. And like, you may include, uh, like you may re erase on the edges and replace them with the edge from one to the current vertex. But yeah, this solution is quadratic. And yeah, basically to get to the next solution, you have to notice that the function is actually convex. So you can use the divide and concurrent HLD to optimize it. And it will run in n log time. However, it's pretty complicated. You can, based on the editorial page, you can see Ildor's solution. It was the setter. And yeah, like you can basically check it out. It's, I mean, like if you have in mind that the function is convex, you can, but basically it won't be that hard to understand the solution, but like there are some simpler solutions and I'm gonna explain like the one I made and yeah, let's go straight to it. Okay, so the simple solution in my opinion, or this is simpler than the setter solution is basically to try getting from the end to the beginning. So in, in some sense, we'll first find f of n minus one. Again, to remind you, f of n minus one is basically when the degree of the first vertex is fixed to n minus one. And like using this thing, we'll basically go to f of one. So yeah, in some sense, like we basically do one of the like most common tricks in competitive programming when you have like, so, so yeah, there are some questions where, which basically ask you to compute some statistic for every K from one to N or something like that. Basically here we have to compute everything, some function for every K from one to N minus one. And like one of the most common tricks for problems like that is basically to start doing everything from the end and not from the beginning. So yeah, we were basically gonna do, use this thing in this problem because it's actually, like using it, we can actually get a very simple solution. So yeah, that, that's like the gen general idea. And let's now get into the details because the hard, for, the hard part of the, like the complicated problems is in a way the details. So yeah. So yeah, we are, we are gonna start easy by just looking at f of n minus one, which is again, you basically have a graph and you have if we want to find the MST, where the degree of vertex one is basically n minus one. And yeah, it's trivial because uh, basically we have n minus one edges connected to one. So f of n minus one will be just the sum of the edges connected to the first vertex. Because like basically we have just one MST, which is, uh, I mean, we not MST, we even have like just one spanning tree, which has degree n minus one for vertex one. And this is basically just, we choose all the vertices that are connected to one. And that's why actually, I'm gonna go to the problem statement now. That's why we actually have this constraint, which is like the, actually that's, that was the other constraint, but like, yeah, somehow I, last time I actually showed it, it wasn't this one, but like basically the thing is that, uh, I mean, the vertex one is basically connected to everything else. And, yeah, that's partially the constraint I wanted to show, which is, uh, yeah, I mean, like that, that, that's useful because we can easily get F and minus one. And it's just like we go from the edges and see the ones that are connected to one. All right, so let's continue by basically like just looking at some example and like one of our main problems right now is actually how to 
do this step? As we already, I mean, I already mentioned the main idea would be to actually go from f n minus one to f of one, but like here the problem comes that we aren't really sure how we can do the step from n minus one to like f n minus two, for example. So yeah, in some sense, we need to, if we have like some uh, minimal spanning tree, we want to, well, like with fixed degree, we want to get the optimal minimal spanning tree for the degree minus one, because this way we can just go to one. And we want to do this in a relatively good, good complexity. So yeah, let's like visualize the graph in the following way. We'll call, we'll have like normal edges and red edges. The red edges will be the ones that are basically connected to one. So in some sense, like the red edges will represent the edges we have in the minimal spanning tree, which are connected to one. So yeah, in the beginning, like basically we have like four, as here we have five verses, so n is equal to five. And this means that we have n minus one equal to four uh, red edges. And yeah, all other edges, which basically have both of their endpoints not equal to one, will be normal edges. And yeah, we can like kind of think of the whole thing. Uh, we, we can kind of think of the current structure as like one being on top as something as a root. And then it has like a bunch of children which are uh, connected with the red edges. And then we have like some trees below. But like we'll go further into that in a bit. So yeah, let's first think how we can get from Fn minus one to Fn minus two. Assuming that, okay, we basically want to go from Fn mi n minus one to Fn minus two. And this means that basically in the beginning we just have red edges in the minimal spanning tree as yeah, we already figured that fn minus one is pretty easy to calculate and see. So yeah, the thing now is that we want to see how to get from this tree to a minimal spanning tree, which has basically one less degree for vertex one. And yeah, here you, you, you have to think, like just to build some intuition before going, what will, before going to what actually will happen, to actually decrease the decre degree of the of vertex one, we need to remove exactly one uh, red red edge, because right now we have like all of the red edges are basically included in our minimal spanning tree. So yeah, in some sense, like to actually decrease the degree, we need to remove one edge. And like if we actually remove one of the edges, think what will actually happen. I'm yeah, let's like just, for example, erase this one. This means that we'll actually like assume, just looking at the minimal spanning tree, we are actually going to disconnect four because don't forget right now, we don't have like these black edges. They are just the normal edges that are still not added to the tree. The tree is just like the red thing right now. So yeah, we basically need to add one of the edges, which is technically here to three. But like, how can we actually figure out which edge we need to add? Like, why should we technically, I mean, why should we cut like this edge and not, for example, this one? And yeah, here, there is like this observation that is actually wrong. But when I went through the solutions, quite a lot of people actually thought that we need to just remove the, we need to just, add from the normal edges, they thought that we need to basically just add the, normal edge with the smallest weight. However, that's wrong. And like the actual thing you need to do is to add the one that will uh, have the largest delta. And now I'm gonna explain what's the delta. So yeah, basically here again, we, we want to add a normal edge to our construction because we want to remove a red edge. So let's define for a normal edge, this delta function which will basically represent the weight of the edge minus the maximum of the red weight of its first endpoint and the second endpoint. And what this actually means is the following. So we want to, in the delta in some same sense, like the people who are probably familiar with math or physics or just in general, yeah, just math, I guess. 
know that normally delta represents change. And like here by delta, I mean that the delta of some edge will represent how the weight of the minimal spanning tree will change if we actually include this edge. And like if we actually include the normal edge, this means that we actually need to cut one of the red edges. So yeah, basically what this means is, okay, we, if we add like this normal edge, for example, this one which has like capacity two, but not capacity two, but like weight two, we basically to the like weight of the minimal spanning tree, we'll basically add it to. However, we also need to cut an edge. Like we were, and like if we cut an edge, we need to cut like a red edge because we want to decrease the degree of vertex one. So we can either cut like this edge or the edge with weight four. And like think about it, we want to minimize the weight of the spanning tree. So why would we ever actually cut four instead of eight? Well, we basically want because I mean, it's always up to, as we are considering the minimal spanning tree, we would want to discard the, the edge which has a greater weight. So yeah, in some sense, what this shows is that the delta of some edge is basically its weight minus the maximum of the red, the red weight of its, one of its endpoints and the red weight of its other endpoint. And by, by red weight, I mean, so, so yeah, like I actually haven't written the definition, but like red weight of uh, some vertex, u for example, is equal to the weight of the edge that connects one to vertex u. Initially, like the red weight from for five is basically four, the red weight for four is eight, for three is seven, and for two is eight. But yeah, like in general, it's basically the weight that we need to cut to actually include a new edge. And like you can convince yourself that if uh, basically we want to go from fn minus one to fn minus two, we need to just replace exactly one edge. So what we will basically do is we are just going to add an edge that's, as initially we just have like some vertices which are connected with red edges. So we are just gonna remove the edge with the smallest delta. Because what we want to do is like to either increase with the least value or decrease as much as possible the minimal spanning tree. So in some sense, like the delta cannot also be negative, but what we want to do is basically just have like the, we'll just add the edge that has like the smallest delta because in some sense, the delta shows like the change. So we want to have like the smallest change. And if the change is negative, that's also good. And it also works because like the smaller the number, the better, because like we'll decrease the minimal spanning tree with the, the largest value this way. So yeah, to actually get from Fn minus one to Fn minus two, we just compute those deltas. We just like iterate through the edges, compute those deltas and get the smallest one. And we basically will include this edge and the edge we will remove will be the one with like the larger red weight. Because I mean, as I said, we would always want to discard the edge that's worse than the other one. Okay, so yeah, basically that's the example of what will happen for this example, because like it will turn out that two is actually, okay. So I actually have a mistake here in my notes. Apparently we actually won't delete this edge, but we'll, okay. So, I mean, clearly the Delta for two is the smallest one because it's Delta is two minus eight. So the Delta is actually minus six. As for three, the Delta is three minus eight. So it's minus five. And like, we are definitely gonna include this edge, which has capacity two uh, and uh, which had a weight two. So yeah, when we actually delete it, we will basically delete this edge, which has weight eight because it has the larger weight. So this means that actually right now the whole thing would look as follows. So yeah. Basically we'll have five connect, one connected to five because yeah, we didn't delete this edge. This was capacity, uh, this was like with weight four and this is, will be connected to 
to with basically the green edge here. So yeah, let me just quickly change this. So in some sense, like right now, the spanning tree will include all red and green edges. And like the black edge, which is here, like the one with, with wave three, will, we can't really remove it so right now because yeah, I mean, it's basically not included in the minimal spanning tree so far. So yeah, we're using this, I'll basically like using this step, we can actually get from Fn minus two to Fn minus one, uh, from Fn minus one to Fn minus two. So yeah, in some, basically like in a bit, we'll actually generalize the whole thing to going from any Fk to any Fk minus one. And yeah, basically, actually the current idea would work, would still work which is pretty cool. And yeah, let, let's go, get to the details. Also here, th there's like the, the most important note maybe in the problem, which actually makes the implementation pretty complicated is actually the fact that we need to actually also update the red edge for the new vertex. Here it's not five because again, as I mentioned, I made a mistake in the notes. So basically we need to update the red edge for node two because imagine so, so in some sense like we just erased this edge from one to, to five to two and like this means that right now two is in a, in a way like a child of five if you consider one as a root so yeah basically this means that right now the red edge for vertex two would actually be this one because like the red, we basically consider the red, we are, the red weight is basically considered the weight of the red edge that's on the path from one to any vertex. And obviously there will be just one red edge for every vertex because we have a tree. So yeah, and that's useful because we could have had something like that. Imagine that there was also an edge from four to two, for example, and Okay, that's not a very good example. Actually it is, yeah. Uh, it's not the best example. Again, maybe here if we had like some other ways, but like what I want to say is it may happen that the edge from four to two would have been actually the one that we want to add in some further step. And like in some sense, we can't really, as we already deleted an edge from, that goes to two, we can't really delete it again. So this way, like imagine that the edge we want to delete would have been the four and we wanted to add like basically this blue edge from four to two. So if there were, were such cases, we actually need to update the red weight for two. But yeah, in general, in general, that's pretty much the idea of what will happen when we have a single update from like Fn minus one to Fn minus two. We just find the edge with the smallest delta and we add it and it will de delete the red edge from its endpoint, like the larger red end red edge for one of its two endpoints. So basically as a recap, again, we can go from Fn minus one to Fn minus two. So here there is the question where we can actually generalize the whole idea. And it turns out we can. And like the idea is that basically the above argument with adding the edge with the largest delta still will work, will still work for the later part. And like to prove this, you can try thinking of like the, you can basically try making a proof by contradiction. You will basically assume that this step won't lead, that there is the optimal solution can be achieved by actually going from fk to fk minus one. And then you can easily prove the contradiction by actually proving that the configuration you assumed isn't optimal. And like there was also proof in the editorial, but I'm not quite sure whether it's the same, but yeah, you can try proving this fact by contradiction. But like the argument with just always considering the edge with the largest delta is 
true and you can prove, prove it by contradiction. I haven't presented the proof here. I have it as a sketch, but yeah, if I had to present it, the whole session would have been probably half an hour longer. And yeah, after that, I'm going to be presenting the other problem. So yeah, it's left to, to the reader's experience. That's an experience for the reader. But yeah, and like, actually, if you, we basically use the step of always finding the edge with the largest delta, we can easily get a on by m solution. And it's actually relatively simple. We just start with all of the red edges because we know that we are, we, we already know fn minus one because it's easy to calculate. And what we do is just we, for every vertex, we find the red w values, like these values. That's very simple. We have the MST and we just run a DFS on it. And we just calculate the red weights for every vertex. And then what we do is basically we iterate again over all edges. They're like M edges. And what we basically do is we just calculate the delta of every edge. And I mean, we have to have like probably like a used array or something like that about the edges we have already added. But in general, it's just like, we'll go through the edges and we are gonna erase some of them. Uh, and we are just gonna cal cal calculate all of the deltas. And after that, we will just add one edge and remove the other one. It's basically what I explained for the step from Fn minus one to Fn minus two. But like we just, we'll just perform the same thing from f of k to f of k minus one. And yeah, in general, this approach isn't very hard to implement. It's just like one DFS and then two for like a nested for loop. So yeah, I think it gave some points. So let me actually check the exact number of points. But yeah, it should pass for like 40 points. But let's go to the actual solution, which is actually pretty cool. So let's actually look at the, okay. Let's look at the transition from f of k to f of k minus one. So I've already mentioned that basically we'll have some trees that are attached to the red vertices. The red vertices are the ones that are connect directly connected to vertex one. And like, why are these trees actually happening? Well, we can just go to the previous case, which we already observed with, yeah, basically this case, although I have already drawn on it, but I hope you can understand what I'm gonna explain. Basically, what will happen is that here we actually cut the edge from one to two. And in some sense, like two is now in the tree, in the subtree of five, because like we have already cut its uh, red edge. So in some sense, it will just be like a child of five and we can't really change the order. And now like basically whenever we have some edge from something to two, we'll always cut like the four edge. Basically what I was explaining here. And yeah, that's, th this basically means that the structure of the tree will look like the, the structure of the minimum spanning tree will look something like that. Uh, like we'll have some red edges and then we'll have some subtrees. And yeah, let's, okay. Also like the blue edges here are the ones that are still not included anywhere or in other words, like the completely normal edges because we still haven't included them in the minimal spanning tree and we still haven't considered like actually removing them and putting something else there. So yeah, let's basically continue. And again, like we basically have one with some trees attached to it. So also now let's consider the, yeah, let me just take this. Okay, now let's also consider the deltas. There's a small problem with the deltas that's the max in them. So I mean like when you look at the formula, we have like delta of uv is equal to the weight of uv, like the delta is equal to the weight minus the maximum of two values. And it's kind of annoying because we can't really easily update it because we have a maximum of two values and like these values can actually change. And imagine that just one of them changes, but this doesn't really mean that 
the maximum of the school will change. And like in general, when you have some expression, which it depends on the maximum and you want to update it, it's a bit tricky. However, here, fortunately enough, we can split the delta into two deltas, which will represent the same, ver the same edge. And the two deltas will be a delta for the first end and the delta for the second end of the edge. And this is correct because we actually always want to minimize the delta. We want to get edge with the smallest delta. So if we just keep two copies, the first one with minus the first value. So like this is like the first value here. And the second one is minus the second one. Like if we just duplicate the deltas and always get like the smallest one, like this, the smaller of delta one and delta two, you'll be fine. And yeah, basically that's one of the tricks we are gonna use. And actually this also gives her some benefit, which is basically that if we actually, if like, if delta one is actually the minimum, like the smallest delta, then we, we are sure that we want to delete the red edge to vertex U. While in the other case, if like delta two is the smaller one, then we are sure that we want to delete the latter, like the, basically like the red edge that goes to vertex V. So yeah, I mean, this observation, I mean, this basically helps us in two ways. First, we discard the maximum, which is kind of annoying in implementation of some data structure problems. And the second one is basically that we also gain the information of which edge we need to remove. So yeah, actually, this is the main observation of the problem. Not, maybe not the main, but like it's very useful because if you just think of the deltas, the weight minus the maximum, probably you won't really get to a very nice solution. So yeah, now let's think what we actually need in this problem. We need a structure that will actually maintain the deltas and it should perform two operations. The first one is basically like get the edge with the smallest delta and after that like basically remove it after, after getting the edge with the largest delta you basically like not remove but like you add it to the tree and the second operation is basically you update the delta after the replacement. So in other words like you get the edge with the largest delta you remove it from our structure because like this means that we are already considering it and we are adding into the minimal spanning tree. But this thing will actually erase like one of the red edges. And after we erase one of the red edges, we in a way like break quite a lot of our tree structure. So yeah, it should also be able to update the deltas for some of the edges after we remove a red edge. So let's go to some example because, uh, yeah, examples always uh, help. So yeah, imagine we have like the same structure as above and like we have figured out that the edge that was from between those two vertices was the best one. So it had like the smallest delta. And the edge that was, that had like the, the larger red edge was the left one. So yeah, we basically removed this edge. So what will actually happen? So keep in mind that only the red and black edges exist in the tree. So let's look how the tree structure will, cha will change. The blue edges are just the edges we still haven't considered or basically some edges that may be optimum, may be added in the future, but they are worse than the best one we just added, like the best one here. So yeah, let's look at how the structure will actually change. So what will actually happen is that, let me try having like both of them. Like this subtree, which is between these two vertices, will basically go to the other one. And like, it will be rooted at the left end point. I'm just like, I just made it green. So you can see which one I mean. So yeah, basically like what will happen is that we'll decrease the number of red edges by one, as you can see here. And like the, the green edge will basically become the new root of this subtree. So in some sense, like we need to update the deltas of these two edges. 
that I, I just crossed. Because like now one of their endpoints actually changed. Also like this one. Completely forgot about it. Because like before the two their two endpoints were these two edges, but like we technically cut one of them. So this means that right now we basically just have like one of their endpoints changed. And this means that we will either change like delta one or delta two for all of them. And the delta one will be like the change would basically be the weight of the edge we cut minus the weight of the edge we cut plus the new edge. So yeah, this will be the change between the deltas. So, okay, I mean, pretty much what we do is we basically merge the trees. So in some sense, like we had like this tree, which looked like a chain, which also had like some blue edges attached to it, next to it. And we also had like the other edge, which the other tree, which was basically this one. And what we did was we basically had the two, had these two trees and we merged them into a new one, which is like this large thing. And like when we actually merged them, what happened too was that the edges that had one of their endpoints at the tree which we changed, like the left one, also had their deltas changed a bit. And yeah, what we want to do is like, we want to maintain such merges of trees. And also we want to be able to basically get the smallest delta. And like one way to do it, to do this is with a linker tree, however it's, it's doable, but like there are better ways to do it. First, because they're faster in practice, also by constant, and also because they are just way less complicated than writing a little cut. Although the link cut is also doable here. You basically maintain a lot of link cut trees. I mean, in some sense, like you have components and what you do is basically you, you get like, you have a statistic for every edge or like for every vertex, you have a bunch of edges and you get like the largest statistic. You may just maintain it to the root of the link cut. I won't go into details because uh, I'm not explaining the solution in this video, but like basically you can actually have like a heap or like a priority queue of the best edges in, I mean, in every component. And then like the updates can be done with a link cut. And it's not a bad, not a bad solution, but there are simpler solutions. So yeah, first there's a very basic solution. I mean, Okay, we already figured out that there's an NLOG solution with LinkCut, which I mentioned exists, but there's also another solution with NLOG. But actually go to this other solution. Let's first look at the NLOG squared solution, which was also fine to pass 400 points, but I guess it's good to just mention all the solutions. So yeah, great. I actually skipped to the beginning. Let me get back. So yeah, the main idea is that the following. We basically will have a union find as initially, so yeah, basically we, as we already figured out, we in a way ignore the edges which are from one to this, basically we ignore the red edges in terms of like connectivity or connected components. So what we actually have is that let's in the beginning have like, I mean like in the beginning all the trees are just a single vertex. Basically that's what I wanted to say. As, I mean, as you can, you, you could see in this case, like the first one I showed, in the beginning we just had like single, com yeah. In the beginning, we just had like simple vertices, which are alone in their connected components. And like after like adding some edges, we start building some larger components. components. So let's just use union find to actually represent the components. And I mean, like when we find the optimal edge, what we will do is we simply will combine the two structures. So the main idea is that Okay, let me go back. So basically what we'll have is a, a priority queue in every connected component. I mean, the people who are familiar with union find probably know where the complexity of logarithm comes from. Although, I mean, if we just have union by rank or union by depth, uh, union by rank or union by size, then we are sure that the complexity is logarithmic. That's because we do something similar to small to large tree. 
and yeah, like this means that if we actually have a priority queue for for the components in the union find, we can actually maintain the deltas. So what I mean by that is that, all right, we have a priority queue that will actually contain the delta of the following endpoint. I mean, we have like like two deltas. One of the deltas will be for one of the vertices. The other one will be for the other vertex of for the following edge. And like this way, we actually can just maintain a priority queue of the deltas. And yeah, in some sense, we can easily find the best edge for a certain component by just getting the maximum in the priority queue. And like the way to combine then is simply by using small to large trick. We will just go through all elements in the smaller component and we just go through the edges and change their delta. And that's pretty much it. And this solution is quite easy to do. And like then, because like this way, we only have a priority queue for that maintains the best edge for every component. Keep in mind that every edge will be into two components, but like in one of the components, it will be with Delta one, in the other one, it will be with Delta two. And like the main idea is that we'll also keep a global priority queue, which will just maintain the best deltas for every con connected component. And to, like every step from like K to K minus one will look as follows. We just get the, we just get the best delta from the global priority queue and this means that we need to combine two things. We combine them, and then we, we might actually pop to deltas from like the global priority queue. I mean, like we just need to do a constant number of updates to the global priority queue after that. And yeah, in general, it's not that hard to implement. Maybe one detail that I skipped here is that here when you actually combine the priority queues, you like technically you want to really maintain only priority queue you would maintain a priority queue and an integer. The integer will be in some sense the offset of priority queue because like imagine you need, you want to delete the smaller, the, the edge that's not in the large part. And this means that you need to change the delta for everything that's in the larger part of the small to large trick. And yeah, that's kind of troublesome. But like what we can do here is that we'll just keep an offset and we'll increase the offset of our structure by the value we are changing with. And what will happen is that we are just gonna add the things from the smaller priority queue with the offset, with like the correct offset minus, I mean, just like with their value minus the new offset that we added. And like this way it can be done. It's something that's pretty common. You probably can just go through people's code for this problem and you I'm pretty sure you will find a solution that uses this and yeah in general that's pretty much it but like it's n log squared because we have small to large trick and like if we analyze it it's n log n for the small to large trick and then we have an additional log for the priority queue and to actually get a bit better what we'll do is that we're simply just yeah okay here I actually mentioned that the easy solution in n log squared is basically just use small to large trick to combine the priority queues. And like to actually get n log, it's not that hard because we act, so, so like when you think what the priority queues are, they're simply heaps. And there's a simple algorithm that actually merges two heaps in log in all log time. Because like keep it, if you remember what the heap is actually, it, what the heaps are actually. They're simply like, you have the top values, which are larger than everything below them, or in this case, like the top values are smaller than everything below them. Then the ones below are also smaller than everything and so on. And like, basically the idea is that you keep like two pointers and one to the first root, then one to the second one, and you just move them. But also I think it's implemented in C++, so you don't really have to do this. But yeah, if you were an enthusiast, it's not hard to implement. You can check it out. It's it's a pretty common thing. So yeah, I mean, this way you can actually get a complete logarithmic solution, which is like n log. And yeah, I mean, also there's the solution with linked trees, and also there's the other solution with 
dynamic programming with uh, HLD and uh, nothing that the function is convex, but it's pretty hard. But yeah, it's like, like the thing about the solution actually with the dynamic programming can uh, convex version is the fact that you actually can learn quite a lot of things from it if you are not familiar with if you are not familiar with the different techniques. So yeah, I suggest you to actually also check it out. But yeah, in general, I think the problem is pretty cool. Like it's kind of it's something kind of generic that's uh, like you probably haven't seen before. As you know, it's like just minimal spanning tree, but you also have an additional constraint. And yeah. You can solve it like with this greedy in some sense, although we discussed why it's correct. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess like if you have some questions, feel free to ask. Maybe a good thing to mention is that uh, like while testing this problem, I actually got a solution for which the complexity is kind of hard to actually find. But basically the idea is that instead of having a priority queue I mean, I pretty much did the idea that's described here with the only change that actually we won't have a priority queue in every connected components, but we'll only have a priority queue, like a global priority queue. And what we'll do is basically when we update some edge, we, I mean, we'll just have like, in a sense, a lazy priority queue, which is the global one, which will contain all deltas. And we'll basically have a che check, which is like just an if statement which checks whether if like the weights of the of the minimal thing so, so basically what, what like the yeah let me think of a nice way to explain it i mean like in some sense we will just have one priority queue which will maintain all deltas mm -hmm. and in a way like if we get the top of the priority queue and its value is wrong so in some sense like we have changed the root and we haven't updated this in the priority queue, we'll just like discard this element, we'll update its value and we'll push it in the queue again. And this will actually work because when we actually update the value of a vertex, it always, like the delta always increases. So in some sense, its position will, if it was the top, it will definitely go to the right and it can go like before. So in some sense, this like gives the correctness, but we aren't really sure about the complexity and we couldn't really come up with a counter example because in some sense, it, it depends on the union find because it's very simple, similar to the union find procedure, but it's also pretty hard to actually find the complexity. Also like another way, but like here, I'm just gonna discuss some ideas, I guess, which is basically we have this, I mean, you can think of the priority queue as a list. And one thing we could do actually is to if instead of a priority queue, we used a set, we could actually find the prefix, which is updated wrong. Again, in like the solution with the only one priority queue, we can find like, if it was just some tree or some set, but like in general, like a binary search tree, we could have fi found like the prefix of like the smallest, smallest values, which is actually wrong. And then just insert it inside. And yeah, probably this, this is pretty similar to the previous one because when you actually insert the thing, it may break the order, but maybe it will be faster. But again, like the idea is very hard to kill. We couldn't. So I guess like, I mean, the main idea we is that it's pretty much the same solution with the fact that you don't really have a global priority queue and you just have one priority queue. And it's basically like, it's the same hardness to implement. So. Yeah, we just, just, I mean, it's, it's also like a possible solution, but I think the one with the merging is cooler. I mean, in that one, you also merge, but this in a lazy way, but like this one is pretty cool. So yeah, I guess if you have some questions, drop them in the chat, I'm gonna check them out. Okay, so. All right, so I actually had to, uh, I just looked through the, through the questions and there was one question that's, that pretty good, that's pretty good. 
which is like just how to get the idea to go from fn minus one to fn minus two. And yeah, that's, I guess like, we are go just going back to the fact that in a way we just, like in general, I guess it's just intuition when you have solved quite a lot of problems about just finding a statistic for all n from one to, like for all k from one to n, for all k from one to n, basically it's pretty, it's a good intuition to actually just start the whole process from the end. And also like in some other questions about queries and stuff, just going from the end is pretty useful. So yeah, in some sense, like that's the reason you would try like going from uh, Fn minus one to F and from Fn minus one to fn minus two and yeah like i guess like always when you have to output a list of k numbers or of a list of n numbers which are like some statistic for every k from one to n just try thinking about doing the call procedure from the back because this may actually simplify your problem quite a lot like for example in this problem and yeah i guess just you can just try it the next time you solve a problem and it may turn out that that's the case so yeah, let's check some other questions if there are. Also, again, I would, it would be greatly appreciated if you can fill out the survey as it's helpful. So yeah. And I mean, if there are no other questions, I guess we can end the session here. As there will be another one in starting in a couple of minutes, which will be for basically the other harder problem one of the other harder problems, the one with the knapsack, which it, I think was my favorite problem in the contest. So yeah, let's, I guess, end the session here if there are no more questions. And thanks for watching. <laughs>